Have you ever seen a real estate agent on TV and wondered how much they make or what it takes to become one? Whether you're a high school student considering career options or someone in the workforce considering a career change, becoming a real estate agent could be a fun and lucrative job to consider. So join us in our first installment of our new series, Career Deep Dive. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Evan, a real estate agent and mortgage broker. So what does it take to become a real estate agent? Well, first off, there are some basic requirements that you have to meet before you can even start the process. You have to meet the minimum age requirement, which is 18. You have to be a legal resident or US citizen in the United States, and you have to have a high school diploma or equivalent. Next comes the pre-licensing education. You must take a pre-licensing course from a state approved real estate education provider. In New York State, it is a 77 hour course, but it can also be as low as 40 hours or even over 100 hours, depending on your state. The pre-licensing course covers a wide range of topics that will help you as an agent, such as basic principles and practices, federal, state, and specific laws, financing, math, the type of property ownership, agent relationships and responsibilities, contracts, property valuation and appraisals, marketing, fair housing laws, environmental issues, terminology, tips and tricks for the exam itself, and much more. Once you think you're ready, schedule an exam at a state-approved testing facility. For New York, it was 90 minutes for 75 multiple choice questions, and you had to have a 70% or higher to pass. The next stage is finding your brokerage. So after you have successfully passed the real estate exam, you now need to find a broker to hold your license and sponsor you. You cannot act as an agent unless a brokerage is doing those two things. Now, choosing a brokerage is also very important. As a new agent, it should be your responsibility to really take the time and effort to research these brokerages because they offer different things at different price ranges and appeal to agents of different levels of experience. When searching for the right broker, take these into consideration. Commission structure, reputation, company culture, training and support, technology and marketing resources, brokerage size, geographic focus, broker's accessibility and daily involvement, contract terms, and customer reviews. The next and final stage is applying for your salesperson's license. Once you have passed the exam and have a broker that's willing to sponsor you, you can now go to your state-specific website and apply for your salesperson's license. So this means filling out online paperwork and paying the initial starting up fees. Once all the paperwork has been filed, all the fees have been paid and you have your physical license, you can now act as a real estate agent. Note, depending on the state where you get your license, you may be able to practice real estate in another state due to reciprocity laws. This means that another state views the requirements that you went through to become a real estate agent as valid enough to work in their state. Now you just have to pay some filing fees, some application fees, and some licensing fees, and now you can practice real estate in that state as well. Not all states have these agreements with each other, so this is another thing you should consider looking at when you're doing your initial research. Now that you're an agent, you have a say in the types of transactions that you want to work in. You could do purely rental, purely residential, or purely commercial. In the end, it's up to you and what you want to do, but it also depends on the specific area that you're working in. If you live in New York City like some of the agents I know, you mainly might just work in Manhattan or Brooklyn selling luxury rentals or multi-million dollar condos and townhomes. Or you could be in the suburbs working on single family homes for middle class Americans. Now what you earn as a real estate agent can also depend on the type of transactions you do. If you mainly do rentals, that means your commission is usually one month's rent split between the selling agent and the buying agent. If you mainly do homes, the commission is typically 5 to 6% of the selling home's price split between the seller's agent and the buyer's agent, usually 3 and 2, 2 and a half and 2 and a half, or even 3 and 3. Let me give you an example. Let's say that the average home price in your area is $550,000. 3% of that is $16,500. And let's say your commission split with your broker is 60%, so you get $9,900. If you're able to do one of these a month, and maybe a few rentals here and there, you can earn a really good living. Something to note, as a real estate agent, you are considered an independent contractor by the IRS, meaning you're not getting a salary and you're not getting the typical employee benefits. Also, when you get your commission, no taxes have been taken out, so it is on you to file your taxes properly with the IRS. As an independent contractor, your broker is not allowed to tell you to work with specific people or during set times. You are allowed to set your own hours, 
your own strategies, and your own goals. That being said, your broker is also not required to pay for your business expenses unless specified in your contract. Now, as a real estate agent, there really are no ceilings. It really depends on how many transactions you can close and how big your commission is. Just remember, the work that you do for a $400,000 house and a $2 million house is relatively the same, but the commission varies drastically. Now, in the beginning, when you're starting out and have no experience and no peer group to rely on, it makes sense to take every single transaction you can. But when you get older and you grow your reputation and your experience, it is now in your benefit to be very selective in the transactions that you choose because you only have so much time. Now, since real estate is a sales job, should you ever decide to move on from the profession, I think you should be pretty good in any other sales related jobs. But if you wanted to stay in the actual industry, people have moved on to become mortgage brokers, property managers, or even real estate brokers. And yeah, that's the basic overview of what it's like to be a real estate agent. I really enjoy my job because I get to help people find homes and deal with the problems that they're having. When I say the sky is the limit, I really do mean the sky is the limit. The amount of work that you put in as a real estate agent really reflects how much you get out of it. The more you put in, the more you get out of it personally, but also financially. If you have any other jobs you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section down below. But until then, thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click the video here. Also, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.